Here are most commonly asked interview questions related to endpoint security, specifically tailored for freshers and cybersecurity. Each question is followed by a detailed and informative answer. 1. What is endpoint security, and why is it important? Answer. Endpoint security refers to the practice of securing individual devices like endpoints such as laptops, desktops, mobile phones, and tablets that connect to a network. It is important because endpoints are often the most vulnerable points in a network, serving as entry points for cyber attacks. Protecting them helps prevent unauthorized access, data breaches, and the spread of malware. 2. What are the primary components of an endpoint security solution? Answer. The primary components of an endpoint security solution typically include antivirus and anti-malware software. Firewalls, intrusion detection systems IDS, intrusion prevention systems IPS, data encryption tools, and patch management systems. Together, these components work to detect, prevent, and respond to various threats targeting endpoints. 3. Can you explain the difference between antivirus and endpoint security? Answer. Antivirus software is a subset of endpoint security, focusing specifically on detecting and removing malware. In contrast, endpoint security is a more comprehensive approach that includes antivirus features but also encompasses other security measures such as device management, data loss prevention, application control, and more, to protect endpoints from a broader range of threats. 4. What is Endpoint Detection and Response EDR, and how does it work? Answer. Endpoint Detection and Response EDR is a cybersecurity solution that monitors and collects data from endpoints to identify, detect, and respond to threats in real time. EDR works by continuously analyzing endpoint activities, detecting unusual behaviors, and providing security teams with the tools to investigate and mitigate potential security incidents. 5. How do firewalls contribute to endpoint security? Answer. Firewalls contribute to endpoint security by controlling the incoming and outgoing network traffic on an endpoint based on predetermined security rules. They act as a barrier between the endpoint and potential threats from the internet or other networks, blocking unauthorized access and helping to prevent malware infections. 6. What is the role of patch management in endpoint security? Answer. Patch management plays a critical role in endpoint security by ensuring that all software on an endpoint is up to date with the latest security patches and updates. This process helps close vulnerabilities that could be exploited by attackers, thereby reducing the risk of cyber attacks. 7. Explain the concept of zero trust in the context of endpoint security. Answer. Zero trust is a security concept that assumes no device, user, or application, whether inside or outside the network should be automatically trusted. In the context of endpoint security, zero trust means continuously verifying the security status of endpoints, enforcing strict access controls, and monitoring all endpoint activities to prevent unauthorized access. 8. What is the difference between endpoint protection platforms, EPP, and endpoint detection and response, EDR? Answer. Endpoint Protection Platform's EPP focus on preventing threats by using tools like antivirus, anti-malware, and firewalls. They are designed to block known threats before they can infect an endpoint. On the other hand, Endpoint Detection and Response EDR goes beyond prevention to detect, investigate, and respond to sophisticated threats that have bypassed EPP controls. 9. How does encryption enhance endpoint security? Answer. Encryption enhances endpoint security by converting sensitive data into an unreadable format that can only be deciphered by authorized parties with the correct decryption key. This ensures that even if an attacker gains access to an endpoint, they cannot read or exploit the encrypted data. 10. What is application whitelisting, and how is it used in endpoint security? Answer. 
Application whitelisting is a security practice that allows only pre-approved, trusted applications to run on an endpoint. In endpoint security, it is used to prevent unauthorized or malicious software from executing, thereby reducing the risk of malware infections and other threats. 11. Describe the importance of user access control USC in endpoint security. Answer. User access control USC is important in endpoint security because it limits the actions that users can perform on an endpoint based on their role and permissions. By restricting administrative privileges, USC reduces the risk of accidental or intentional changes that could compromise the security of the endpoint. 12. What are the common challenges in securing endpoints in a corporate environment? Answer. Common challenges include managing a diverse range of devices, ensuring all endpoints are consistently updated and patched, balancing security with user convenience, protecting endpoints from both known and unknown threats, and monitoring and responding to incidents in real time across a distributed network. 13. How do mobile devices complicate endpoint security? Answer, mobile devices complicate endpoint security because they are often used outside the corporate network, making them more vulnerable to attacks. They may connect to unsecured Wi-Fi networks, lack proper security controls, and be used to access sensitive corporate data. The variety of operating systems and device types also adds complexity to managing and securing them. 14. What is the role of multi-factor authentication MFA in endpoint security? Answer. Multi-factor authentication MFA adds an extra layer of security to endpoint access by requiring users to provide two or more verification factors, for example, password, biometric, security token before gaining access. This helps prevent unauthorized access even if a user's credentials are compromised. 15. Explain how threat intelligence is utilized in endpoint security. Answer. Threat intelligence in endpoint security involves collecting and analyzing data about known threats such as malware signatures, attack patterns, and threat actors to enhance the protection of endpoints. This information is used to update security tools inform response strategies, and proactively defend against potential threats. 16. What is the significance of behavioral analysis in endpoint security? Answer. Behavioral analysis is significant in endpoint security because it focuses on detecting anomalies in endpoint activities that may indicate malicious behavior. Unlike signature-based detection, which relies on known threat patterns, Behavioral analysis identifies threats based on deviations from normal behavior, helping to detect zero-day attacks and advanced persistent threats APTs. 17. Can you explain the concept of data loss prevention DLP in the context of endpoint security? Answer. Data loss prevention DLP refers to the strategies and tools used to prevent unauthorized access transfer, or destruction of sensitive data from an endpoint. In endpoint security, DLP ensures that confidential data is not leaked or exfiltrated, whether intentionally or accidentally, by monitoring and controlling data movement and enforcing security policies. 18. How does endpoint isolation help contain a security breach? Answer. Endpoint isolation helps contain a security breach by disconnecting the compromised endpoint from the network, limiting its ability to communicate with other devices. This prevents the spread of malware or the exfiltration of sensitive data, allowing security teams to investigate and remediate the issue without risking further damage. 19. What is the role of endpoint backup in enhancing security? Answer. Endpoint backup plays a crucial role in enhancing security by ensuring that data on endpoints is regularly backed up and can be restored in case of data loss due to malware attacks, accidental deletion, or hardware failure. It provides a safeguard against ransomware attacks where data can be recovered without paying the ransom.
20. How do you ensure compliance with security policies on all endpoints in an organization? Answer. Ensuring compliance with security policies on all endpoints involves deploying centralized management tools that enforce security configurations, monitoring endpoints for adherence to policies, and regularly auditing and updating the policies. Automated compliance checks and user training are also essential to maintaining security across all devices. 21. What is the purpose of an endpoint security policy? And what does it typically include? Answer. An endpoint security policy defines the rules and guidelines for securing endpoints within an organization. It typically includes acceptable use policies, access control measures, encryption requirements, software update procedures, incident response protocols, and guidelines for securing mobile devices and remote workstations. 22. How does the principle of least privilege apply to endpoint security? Answer. The principle of least privilege applies to endpoint security by ensuring that users and applications have only the minimum level of access necessary to perform their functions. This reduces the risk of unauthorized access and limits the potential damage from compromised accounts or applications. 23. What is the difference between a host-based intrusion detection system HIDS and a host-based intrusion prevention system HIPS? Answer, a host-based intrusion detection system HIDS monitors and analyzes the behavior of an individual endpoint to detect signs of malicious activity. It alerts administrators to potential threats, but does not actively block them. In contrast, a host-based intrusion prevention system HIPS not only detects suspicious activity, but also takes action to block or prevent it from compromising the endpoint. 24. Explain the role of endpoint security in protecting against ransomware attacks. Answer. Endpoint security protects against ransomware attacks by employing multiple layers of defense, such as antivirus software, firewalls, application whitelisting, and behavior analysis. These tools work together to detect and block ransomware before it can encrypt files while regular backups and data recovery plans mitigate the impact of a successful attack. 25. How do you handle the security of endpoints used by remote employees? Answer. Securing endpoints used by remote employees involves implementing virtual private networks VPNs, enforcing strong authentication methods like MFA, using encryption for sensitive data, applying regular software updates and patches, and deploying endpoint security solutions that provide visibility and control over remote devices. 26. What is endpoint hardening, and why is it important? Answer. Endpoint hardening refers to the process of securing endpoints by reducing their attack surface. This includes disabling unnecessary services, closing unused ports, applying security patches, enforcing strict security configurations, and removing unneeded software. It is important because it minimizes the number of vulnerabilities that attackers can exploit, thereby strengthening the overall security posture of the endpoint. 27. Can you explain how endpoint security solutions handle phishing attacks? Answer, point security solutions handle phishing attacks by using advanced email filtering tools, anti-phishing software, and real-time threat detection systems. These tools analyze emails for suspicious links or attachments, block access to known malicious websites, and alert users when they are about to enter credentials on a potentially dangerous site. Additionally, behavioral analysis can detect unusual login attempts that may result from phishing. 28. What is the importance of logging and monitoring in endpoint security? Answer. Logging and monitoring are critical in endpoint security because they provide detailed records of endpoint activities, including user actions, software changes, and network connections. By continuously monitoring these logs, security teams can detect suspicious activities, identify potential security incidents, and respond quickly to mitigate threats.
Effective logging also aids in forensic investigations following a security breach. 29. How do endpoint security solutions integrate with SIEM security information and event management systems? Answer. Endpoint security solutions integrate with SIEM systems by feeding endpoint activity data into the SIEM platform, where it is correlated with data from other sources across the network. This integration enables a comprehensive view of the organization's security posture, facilitates the detection of complex threats that span multiple endpoints, and supports more effective incident response through centralized monitoring and analysis. 30. What are some best practices for securing endpoints in a bring-your-own-device BYOD environment? Answer. Best practices for securing endpoints in a BYOD environment include enforcing strict security policies that require encryption, regular updates, and strong passwords on all devices. Implementing mobile device management MDM solutions can help monitor and enforce compliance. Using VPNs for secure connections, applying application whitelisting, and educating employees on security risks are also essential. Additionally, separating corporate and personal data on devices through containerization can protect sensitive information. This set of questions and answers should help freshers prepare for interviews focused on endpoint security, covering a wide range of topics and providing a solid foundation in this crucial area of cybersecurity. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews, and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science, SAP, AWS, DevOps, and full-stack web development, and more. That will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers, and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers. For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most asked interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.